This is Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Come on, let's all go to the lobby. Because people are staring at us listening to these shows while we're in the theater. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation of Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. You are listening to Showcase Confession, which was written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. Diary entry. In retrospect, Father David Moore. It was the Earth year 2399. It was the month of August. I had been assigned, by my order, to the deep space cargo vessel the CS Ephemeral, bound from Titan to the mining colony on Mars. The ship was transporting technical and food supplies, as well as a small detachment of criminal offenders. These men and women were mostly small-time thieves, smugglers, and pirates. But there was one special case aboard that flight. His name, Thomas Croker. His crime, murder. A tribunal of colonial magistrates had sentenced this man to death by spacing, which meant that he was to be ejected into the cold blackness of space during our trip back to Mars Colony. These were frontier days. This was frontier justice, which was swift and direct. Harsh, some might say. But those were the times we were living in. The law had little time or patience for deviation of the status quo. Any transgression in the harsh environments of colonial life was met with cold, hard redress. With that said, the crime committed by Thomas Croker was no small thing. The others were simply to be incarcerated in Mars Colony, set to serve in the mines there, hard labor, which was severe punishment enough, but to condemn a man to death, and in such a way, It seems even now too cruel, too cold, too swift, but it was not my place to question those who doled out justice in our cold, hard existence. It was not my place to cast judgment. It was my duty to provide comfort to those who may need it, even if they may not want it. Thomas Croker was such a man that needed something. In my mind, he needed enlightenment even if he didn't know he wanted it. Do you mind if I sit? Suit yourself, Father. Is there anything you'd like to confess, my son? What would be the point now, Father? They found me guilty and sentenced me to death. In a few hours, they're going to toss me into space. So the way I figure it, it's too late for confessions. It's... it's just too late for anything. That isn't true, my son. There is still time. Time for what, Father? To save my soul? (laughs) Don't make me laugh. You lack faith. More than lack. I don't have any. I just don't believe. Listen to me, Father. I'm not buying what you're selling. I'm not selling anything, Mr. Croker. I'm simply here to comfort you in your final hours. That is, if you want any comfort. If you prefer, I could go. I didn't say that. I... I I mean, I'd like the company. Just, Just skip the sermon. As you wish. So then, what would you like to talk about? I, I, I don't know. Are you hungry? Have they fed you? I had lunch. 
and then they'll bring me my final meal in a few hours. <laughs> it's, it's funny. They said I could have anything I wanted for my final meal. I said I wanted pizza. They laughed and said that all they have are ration packs. I could have my choice of chicken, vegetables, or beef. <laughs> what a choice. <laughs> I'm sorry, my son. Why? Why do you call people your son? Why do we have to call you father? Oh, I don't know. I suppose tradition. Some forgotten sign of respect. You can just call me David if you prefer. I... I think I would prefer that. And you can just call me Thomas. Of course. So, tell me, David. What is it that you think you can do for me? I am only here to give you some comfort. And perhaps provide some counsel. To see if you had anything you wished to confess. Before... Well... Before the last moment comes. You mean, do I want you to pray for my everlasting soul before they space me? You want to try and save me before the end? Sadly, I cannot save you, Thomas. Nor can I save your soul. That is between you and God. Forgive me, but God's a little late. Is he? Where was God when I chose to end someone's life? If he's all that in a bag of chips, why didn't he show up and stop me? God has given us free will, you know, Thomas. So the real question is, why didn't you stop yourself? I wish I could have. But you see, I lost control of myself. I lost control of my free will. I was so angry in that moment that I could do nothing else but to kill. Yes, I was wrong for taking a life. I do know the difference between right and wrong before you ask me that question. But in the moment, it didn't matter. So, tell me, if God is really there and God is so great, why didn't he step up to the plate and stop me? There are no easy answers, I'm afraid. Well, maybe there are just simply no answers. Because maybe there is simply no God. Are you an atheist, Thomas? Atheist? What does that even mean? By definition, it means to deny or disbelieve the existence of a supreme being. But what does it mean to you? To me? To me it means that I don't believe in anything. So, yes, I suppose you could say that I am an atheist. I know you would say that this life is not all there is. That there is something more beyond the end of my life. But for me to believe that? I'd have to believe that in a few hours, because of my sins, and they are great sins, that I will be suffering in hell from this day forward and forevermore. Not necessarily, Thomas. You can confess before God and ask his forgiveness. There is still time. Bull! There is no time. There is no God. And in this life, nor the next, there is no forgiveness for me. In the next? <laughs> it sounds to me like you do believe in an afterlife, Thomas. It was an expression. That's all. Was it? Is that all it was? Or perhaps you do believe in something? I can't believe in what you believe in. Because if I did, I'd know for certain that my sins will be punished in eternal hellfire. And I just can't accept that. Do you understand, David? I believe I'm beginning to. It sounds to me as if you've simply lost your way. Haven't we all as human beings? I mean, th look at us. We bridged the distance between stars, between planets. We now live among the heavens. We came up here and we can see for ourselves that there is no God, which means there is no devil, which means there is no hell, God, religion, life, death. It means nothing anymore. Science and fact have won out over belief. So yes, we've lost our way. We've lost the old ways. On Earth, we needed to believe in something more. We needed the hope of mythology. But we came up here and proved that none of it means a damn thing. That book you're holding, we've proven it to be nothing more than a work of fiction. 
<laughs> Maybe what we've proven is that we are God. If that is so, then you can simply forgive yourself. So why don't you absolve yourself of all of your sins? And how the hell do I do that? By forgiving yourself. Oh, it's just that simple, eh? It could be. It's a start. Then I am truly doomed. Because I can't forgive myself. But why not? Because I can still see the look in his eyes. I remember what it looked like to see the life leave his face. What it felt like to squeeze his neck so hard. And for so long that his last breath escaped right at the end. I felt death. I felt the finality of it. And I knew right then and there, I don't deserve forgiveness. I don't deserve the life I was born with. I deserve my punishment. Harsh as it may seem, being pushed out an airlock to die in the loneliness and blackness of space, I deserve no less. Oh, my son, you deserve to be forgiven. We all do. No. If we are God, if I am my own God, then I have decided I deserve this fate. I deserve my punishment. I was sentenced to death by the harshest means we have available because I deserve it. You wanted me to confess before you and God. Well, I confess my sins to you and to myself. I confess my sins to the universe and I give my mortal life to the fate I do deserve. Thomas Croker had nothing more to say to me. In fact, he stopped talking altogether at that point. The hour came, and he was punished for his crime in the exact way he had been sentenced to do so. His life ended. I think, in a way, mine ended too that day. At least the life I had known. To listen to that man, to hear what he had said, and then to watch him die in the way that he did... Well, it stayed with me, up until this very day. I can't get it out of my mind. So, with that, on this day, I have decided that I am not cut out for the priesthood anymore. Because, talking with Thomas Croker, hearing his philosophy, watching him die, it convinced me that he was right. We've conquered space. Science and fact have won out over belief. Biblical mythology makes no sense in this world, in this time, now. Not to me, anyway. So I have stopped being a priest. I have stopped believing in the mythical God. We are our own gods, mankind, and I can no longer believe that there is anything more. You have been listening to Showcase Confession, which was written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and which starred, in order of appearance, Jonathan Patrick Russell as David Moore, Shane Harris as Thomas Croker. The Showcase theme tune and the incidental music heard in this program was provided by Kevin McLeod. The post-production editor was Maria Major. The sound designer, producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. 
The series Dream Realm Showcase was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dreamrealmsite.com. And if you'd like to email us with any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. Please join us again soon for another incredible story. This program is copyright 2020 and is brought to you by Dream Realm Enterprises, soaring into new realms. Hi there. Are you a fan of all things horror? Yeah, you are? Well, in that case, find Tuesday Terrors, which is the mutual audio feed that comes out on a Tuesday, believe it or not. Shock horror, I know. But if you subscribe there, 
you'll find amazing horror fiction audio in your player every Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday Terrors. Subscribe to the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.